Hi there, hope you're keeping well. Uh, welcome to another edition of Walk the Word. Great to have you with us. And uh, we're just passionate about reading the Bible together and allowing it to shape our lives so that we live out, we live our lives differently. And uh, we live our lives in accordance to, to what the Word says, not necessarily what we want and how we want to live, but how God wants us to live. And so uh, we're in a study at the moment in 1 Peter, and um, we're going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. So you can turn there in your Bibles, open your Bibles, read along, or you can read uh, in the description box below this video. You can read along the passages posted there. I encourage you to read the passage with us. So here we go. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. It says, Finally, all of you be like minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. But always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander, for it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God, who was put to death in the body but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you. Also... Uh, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. OK, so there's a lot in there and there's probably a number of things we could talk about. But what I want to focus on is this uh, verse uh, in uh, verse 15, where it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, okay? So we're to be a people that are prepared. Scout's motto, isn't it? I think, be prepared. <laughs> you know, we're to be prepared, prepared with the reason to give an answer to people who are inquiring about the hope that we have, okay? And three things really struck me. I think, first of all, if people are gonna get there, if people are gonna ever ask us about the hope that we have, the things that we believe, then they need to see that hope in us, don't they? They need to see something in us. Secondly, we need to be prepared to, to, to give that answer. And then thirdly, there's something about the manner. It speaks about the manner, the way that we, we, we answer them and give that answer. OK, so those are the three things I just want to draw out from this passage. And so firstly, if people are going to ever get to that point where they ask us, so tell me about the hope that you have in, um, you know, what, what do you believe? Then they need to see something different in us. And actually, Peter, he um, gives us some pointers, doesn't he? He says, finally, all of you be like minded. You know, so, 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 so be together, be one in spirit, you know, put aside division. You know, so often churches are torn apart by divisions and disagreements and fallouts. Um, and Peter's saying, no, let, let's, you know, Paul elsewhere says, you know, be one in spirit, maintain the unity of the spirit. And we need to be a people that are like minded together, working together for unity. <coughs> We're to be sympathetic, OK, to love one another. So there's something about the family of God, the church that loves one another. You know, John, I think John says elsewhere, by this, all people will know you're my, my disciples if you love one another. So our love for one another can be an amazing witness to the hope that we have. Be compassionate, you know? So that word compassion isn't just sympathy, it's, it's, it's moving into action. Compassionate is we're moved to the point where we take action. And so we're to be compassionate with one another, but compassionate to those in need outside the church. Something of our... Uh, the hope that we have should be seen in our compassion for those outside the church and, and those in need, particularly around us. Be humble. OK, so there should be something about um, our manner, that we're a humble people. We're not proud. We're not arrogant. Yeah, we're, we, 
that, that there's a humility about us that speaks of the hope that we have. And then there's this great challenge, isn't there? Not to repay evil with evil, but rather blessing. It echoes the words of Jesus when he talks about turning the other cheek. You know, Peter's echoing those words here that we're to repay evil with good and with blessing. And that is very counterculture, isn't it? A, a very challenging, it has to be said. But nonetheless, that's what Jesus calls us to. And Peter's echoing his words. And he's saying, look, you know, people if people see us living lives like that, they will ask us about it. They, you know, we will be so different that we will stand out and people will ask us. And so the first thing is, is do people, are we living the kind of lives where people will see the hope in us? Secondly, when people do ask, we need to be prepared, don't we? Prepared to give an answer. Have you thought about how you would share this hope that you have in, 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 uh, in God? Because it says in verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. You know, it, in one sense, there's the essence of the gospel right there. There's the core of the hope that we have, that Christ has come and he's paid the price for our sins, dying on the cross to bring us to God so we can now have fellowship with God. We can know God and God can know us and we can experience his love and his favour and his blessing. Have you thought about, well, how would I communicate that hope um, to, to someone who asks and it might be as simple as you know what I've just said or it might be your testimony something about your testimony now I, I'll share my story of how Jesus has made a difference in my life and the hope that it's brought me it's important that we think about that we're prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have and then finally there's something about the manner that we communicate this hope because it says um, but do this with, a, with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, okay? So there's something about the manner that we communicate this hope that, that, that speaks about the message of, of hope, yeah? Because the message is grace, the message is love, the message is forgiveness, the message is you can know God, he loves you. Yes, Jesus died for you so that you could find forgiveness but God loves you and you can come into relationship with him. And there's something about the manner in which we communicate that, which helps with the message, okay? We're not to be arrogant. We're not to be obnoxious. We're not to be boisterous in our, in our communicating the message. We're to do this with gentleness, with a gentle spirit. And we're to do it with respect, respecting people. You know, not, not um, getting drawn into arguments, heated arguments. You know, so often... I think Christians can uh, try and win the argument, but at the expense of losing the person. And sometimes it's not so important to win the argument. We just need to communicate God's love to people. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean winning the argument. It just means actually being gentle. It, it means being respectful. It means actually showing love to that person. So we don't need to worry so much actually about winning the argument when we do Often that's when we fall into trouble. We just need to worry. We need to just work on how we're going to communicate the message in a manner that communicates hope and love. Yeah. <coughs> so I just want you to, to think about that. Perhaps read that passage again. Take those things on, on board. Do people see the hope in your life so that they might ask you questions that, so that you might be prepared and ready? Are you prepared and ready to give that hope? And will you do it in a manner that actually communicates the core of our hope that God loves you and God cares for you, yeah? So think about that, ask for the Holy Spirit's help and let's carry that into our day today. Have a great day, we'll see you soon.